You're now listening to the Fantasy Filler Podcast. Where we put you in the driver's seat every week, all year long. In the NASCAR racing world, from top news stories, latest results, and best fantasy lineups, we'll have you up to speed and out in front before the drop of the green flag. So let's dive in with our host, Vanilla Wafers. What turn four? Alrighty, I already made the joke, so we don't have to worry about it again. But yes, NASCAR has made the return to Pocono Raceway, the three-mile 2.5 racetrack as the Truck Series, Xfinity Series, and Cup Series will be racing around there here this weekend. We'll be talking about this week's news as well as our top fantasy picks, all that and more on today's episode of the Fantasy Filler Podcast. Hopefully you guys are ready for this weekend. I know Pocono Raceway has the stigma of being one of the more lackluster races of the year, but with the next-gen car, there's definitely been a feel of more excitement, especially at the bigger racetracks, so I'm going to be a little optimistic here about this race. Plus, since there's only just a few races left of the regular season, this race is more important than ever for a lot of drivers. We've talked about the last couple episodes how important those final two spots are for almost all the series, as the points battle is so close for the trucks xfinity series and cup series uh cup series you have about like six to seven drivers who have an opportunity to make their way in on points uh in the xfinity series there's still about four drivers in the mix right there and the truck series this is their second to last race before the regular season ends so this is an extremely important race for the truck series so i'm absolutely excited here for this weekend on what this weekend holds for us as far as racing goes it should be very interesting on all three series whether it's strategies throughout the race whether it's aggressive driving or maybe the cars will just put on one hell of an exciting event for us that we don't even got to worry that the track is so damn long and that the past races have not been that exciting Uh, And this week in the racing world, we've had quite a few news drops here that really shocked a lot of people. There was one that came out earlier um, last weekend that I forgot to mention that is kind of important, and that is regarding who is going to be the drivers over at Stuart Haas Racing. Now, we already have one confirmed, and that is Josh Berry. And Chase Briscoe, I believe, is confirmed as well, as he will be driving the number 14. Kevin Harvick's retiring. However, the last two rides with the number 41 and number 10 are still up in the air. Eric Amarola does have the opportunity to return, but he has not made a final decision on if he's returning. And Ryan Priest, they still haven't signed anything yet. However, Ryan Priest did say earlier this week that he expects a contract renewal with Stuart Haas Racing. So more than likely, he will be returning back to that number 40 one car but the questions still are on everyone's mind on who will be driving that number 10 if it's not Eric Amarola well there was a name that popped up and I'm not gonna lie I was quite surprised by this name as I feel like he has been a staple with one team for a very very long time I don't see why he would move but maybe he sees something um, as a potential opportunity for the Stuart Haas Racing and that is the number 34 driver of Michael McDowell, the 2021 Daytona 500 winner. This is very, very interesting to say the least, just for the simple fact that, you know, Michael McDowell has been with this team forever. I'm not going to say since day one, because From Road Motorsports has actually been around the sport for since like 2005. And he didn't join them till about, what was it, like 2014, 2015? It's been a good while that he's been with this team and he he's done really really well he in fact he is in the playoffs as we speak of course there's still a few more races that go but the fact that that number 34 team is trying to make it in via points is something that I don't think anyone would ever thought of just a few years back so why is Michael McDowell moving on over to Stuart Haas Racing there's a few speculations one I think the biggest one is with Front Row Motorsports, they do not plan to be a three-car operation anymore. They've tried it in the past, and it looks like they're going to stay with two cars. And the main reason for that is because you only have so many charters. Not everyone's guaranteed to make it in. If you're new to NASCAR, um, there are 36 charters out there. And if you have a charter, you're guaranteed um, a certain amount of pay as well as being locked into every single race. That is why for the last couple of years, you've only seen about 36 car fields. It can go up to 40 But for those teams that don't have a charter, it just doesn't make any financial sense unless they have a huge sponsorship backing them. So Front Row Motorsports has no interest of becoming a three-car team, and there's really no charters up for sale. 
So that could be a concern for Michael McDowell. He is getting up there in age. I don't think they want to get rid of Todd Gillen. I see a lot of opportunities from Todd Gillen. He's driving their second best car. And there's a big difference between the primary car and the secondary car, especially for these smaller teams. And Todd Gillen's been able to do a lot with that number 38 machine. So I don't think they want to get rid of Todd Gillen. Their developmental driver moving on up is Zane Smith, who has just been spectacular in the truck series in their equipment. So they, we know that they want to move Zane Smith on up because he's already running part-time schedule this year. He's running a few races in the 38 machine, and he was able to race in the Daytona 500 in their third car. That was the only time they wanted to run a third car was in the Daytona 500. So maybe this is a concern for Michael McDowell. Maybe he's thinking to himself, you know, I got to find an opportunity somewhere else because I don't think I have many years left in front of me to stay with this team. Now, the second thing could be the fact that Stuart Haas Racing is having a lot of young guns in their driver lineup. And let's be honest here. Yes, it's great to have young drivers, but if you don't have really a leadership figure in that garage area, it's not going to work out too well. And Kevin Harvick has been that leadership driver for so long. And now he's retiring at the end of this year. So you're going to move Josh Berry in, who's only raced a couple of Cup Series races due to being a substitute driver for Chase Elliott. Ryan Priest has only raced a couple of years. Chase Briscoe's only raced a couple of years. And uh, um, Eric Amarola could be leaving. So who do you put in there? Riley Herbst? I don't think Riley Herbst is ready to come be- come into the Cup Series. He, I think his, keeping him in the Xfinity Series is the best option. What about bringing Cole Custer back? Well, we, we've had the Cole Custer experiment, experiment, and it didn't really work out too well. So who can really take over that spot as being the leadership driver? I think these drivers right now are too green in the Cup Series to really lead the garage for Stuart Haas Racing. So having someone like Michael McDowell, who's been in the series since 2008, would not be a bad idea. And we know his consistency. We know um, how good he is at keeping a car rather clean. And we know that also that that 10 car was notoriously known as being a top 10 contender week in, week out. Sure, they weren't a car that was going for victories, but they didn't need the 10 car to be the victorious car. They needed the car to be a consistent one. And Eric Amarola brought that. Michael McDowell could be the potential driver to bring that in for Stuart Haas Racing. So definitely some interesting rumors here. Nothing is for certain over here in the Front Row Motorsports and Stuart Haas Racing Camp. These ones are just speculations. But I found it very fascinating that the 2021 Daytona 500 winner was in the question of moving on over to Stuart Haas Racing. Now, there has been some news that is guaranteed that there will be changes. And this one really caught me off guard. As you guys are well aware, uh, Rick Rare Racing has been struggling with their primary drivers due to a very, very unfortunate circumstance that involved Rick Rare's son, Cody Ware, who was the primary driver for the 51 machine, having some legal problems, which has gotten him indefinitely suspended from NASCAR. It, It is a long story. I don't want to get into it because it's one of those stories that just makes you upset just due to the immorality that happened within that incident. But the 51 car has had multiple drivers. You've had Matt Crafton running in it. Ryan Newman has made his return to the Cup Series, which has been crazy. You've had Cole Custer run a few races. So they've really just had quite a few part-time drivers here for the Cup Series in this number 51 car. Who was going to drive it full-time? Well, it looks like they have reached a multi-year agreement for someone to drive that particular car starting in 2024. And you're going to be surprised by this one because this is a full-time Cup Series driver. And he drives in the Chevrolet camp, more specifically with Colleg Racing. Justin Haley, the 24-year-old native from Indiana, will drive a Ford Mustang for the team on a full-time basis in the NASCAR Cup Series starting in 2024. It hasn't been announced exactly how many years he is going to be running with the team, but they have stated that it is a multi-year agreement. I don't know about you guys. But I did not expect this one at all. Honestly. I mean, when you think of Justin Haley, you think of Colleg Racing. He's been with Colleg Racing since day one. So to see him jump to a new team is quite shocking to me. And and I'm really trying to wonder why that was the case. Again, we're going to throw up a few options similar to what Michael McDowell could be doing with Stuart Haas Racing. First one could be you got some potential drivers moving on up to Colleg Racing into the Cup Series. And the one big driver that everyone's thinking about is Chandler Smith. And you know what? Chandler Smith has been very deserving of an opportunity to run in some great equipment. 
especially even up in the Cup Series. Just look how good he's been doing his rookie season so far with Colic Racing down in the Xfinity Series. He's already gotten himself a victory. He's running up front in most races, and I will not be surprised if you see him as a contender for the championship when the end of the year at Phoenix, if he's one of those championship four. I really see that one happening for Chandler Smith, and that is crazy, especially for a rookie in the Xfinity Series. That doesn't happen too much. And if you think of the drivers who have been able to do that, one of the more noticeable drivers, like Ty Gibbs, he's already running in top equipment. And to be honest, as a rookie, he's doing a pretty damn good job. Could Chandler Smith be that potential driver that moves on up into the Cup Series for Colic Racing to drive that number 31 car? I don't know. Uh, AJ Allmendinger, uh, what about him? He, he's starting to get up there in age. Why why is Justin Haley leaving if we know we got a, um, a driver who has more years behind him than in front of him? Why, why would he want to leave? I, I feel like you'd move Chandler Smith into that number 16 car rather than move him on into the number 31 machine. Well, AJ Allmendinger, he, he's doing a really good job in that car, a lot better than what Jason, Justin Haley's been able to do in the number 31 machine. AJ Allmendinger, he, he really likes this team. Back then when he was with JTG Dortry racing in the number 47 car, did not like it at all. At all. He was really not enjoying his time there. Once he found this team, he went from only wanting to do part-time through the Xfinity Series to doing full-time in the Xfinity Series, then part-time in the Cup Series, now full-time. You clearly can tell that he really likes working with this team. Call Matt Collig and Chris Rice, who are the owners of Collig Racing, have never really put pressure on AJ on whether or not he wanted to run full-time, part-time, or move on up. They've always asked him, but it was obviously his answer and his decision at the very end. And AJ Allmendinger really likes the team, and right now he's doing really good. So I really don't see AJ really going anywhere in the next couple of years. But Justin Haley must have felt that pressure because he, he's not performing nearly as well as AJ. If AJ makes it into the playoffs, ooh, that is really going to look bad for Justin Haley. Excuse me there. So maybe, just maybe, that's why he's looking to sign on with another team, which he already has done. Now, and more more questions now pop up. Why Rick Rare Racing? Rick Rare Racing is not a top tier equipment. That is definitely a step down from Colic Racing. No ifs, ands, or buts. And I like Rick Rare Racing. I, I like all those guys over there. Well, most of them. Um, unfortunately, there's some of them that have kind of lost my trust as time has went by uh, for obvious reasons that we talked about a little bit earlier. But it, it, they're definitely a step down from Colic Racing. You know, Colic Racing's already got in a victory in the Cup Series, and they got multiple victories in the X-Fandy Series, while Rick Bear Racing has not been able to do that, even though they've ran more years in the Cup Series and um, quite a few years in the X-Fandy Series as well. Maybe Justin Haley is trying to do something similar to what Corey LaJoy is doing with Spire Motorsports. Now, that's a far-fetched idea. I get that. That's a really far-fetched idea. But at the same time, he knows if he goes to Rick Rare Racing, he will be their top guy because who do they have really in the works? You got J.J. Yaley, but let's be honest, we all know J.J. Yaley is not going to be your top driver um, at all. He, he's a great driver to have as your um, guy to keep the car clean, but not really to run up front. Let, let, let's be honest here. And there's really no other drivers coming up that are being like, oh yeah, we're, we're with Rick Rare Racing, we're going to stay there till the bitter end. I don't really think that's happening, but Justin Haley could take over that spot and could definitely be the face of that team. That could be something he's going with, or maybe he's trying to get the opportunity to go with RFK Racing, because let's be honest, Brad Keselowski is another one of those drivers who's getting up in age. Maybe he feels like if he runs with Rick Bear Racing, puts on some good results, he could be the next driver for that number six machine, a team that has really made leaps and bounds of improvement from last season. Now, again... You're, you're, you're hoping that Brad Keselowski leaves sooner than later. But still, Justin Haley's setting up that plan because I think maybe he thought to himself, you know, now I'm here with Collard Racing in this number 31 card. This is the furthest I can go. And honestly, the furthest I can go is top 20s at best. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not Justin Haley, but that could be um, what's going on in his mind right now. But this is a very, very interesting situation. I mean, this is great news for Rick Rare Racing. This is bad news for Colleg Racing. And Justin Haley, it's going to be interesting what he can do here in the next couple of years. No longer driving the number 31 machine. He will be either in the number 15 or 51. They have not confirmed what number it is. But basically, it will be the primary car for Rick Rare Racing. That will be very, very interesting to see. And who knows? Who, who honestly knows what's going to happen there? 
And also some news, this is for one of the part-time Cup Series teams, uh, more specifically the Money Racing team's primary driver, and that is Connor Daly. If you don't know who Connor Daly is, he's a driver in the IndyCar Series and also has made a few starts here in the Cup Series this year, the Daytona 500, as well as the race at Circuit of the Americas. They decided to ask him some questions because we haven't seen the 50 car in quite a while. We expected them at the Coca Cola 600, nowhere to be seen. We expected them at the Chicago Street Course, nowhere to be seen. So where is this team? And where is Connor Daly, who said he was going to run six to eight races this year? He just made the announcement that he's not running any more Cup Series races this year. So I don't know what exactly happened here. Uh, it's a bummer for all the Money Racing Team fans. I know a lot of people enjoy seeing those open charter cars, but something's not working out with the team, whether it's the team itself financially or it's the relationship they have with this driver. But it looks like he is not going to be running any more races here this season. And more than likely, we will not see that number 50 car back out on the racetrack for 2023. This was just announced just a couple of hours ago. And so this is definitely some fresh news. And I don't think really anything else has been updated at this time. But it's got to be a bummer for those people who really enjoy seeing those extra cars uh, make attempts at certain races. I know I'm one of them. And for someone like the number 50 team who runs about, uh, about five races a year the last couple of years... That's a bummer. That's, that really is a bummer, and I was just hoping that we could see him um, a couple more times and maybe even more races in the future, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. It looks like they're taking a step back at this time. So do not expect to see Connor Daly or the 50 car at all for the rest of the 2023 season, but do expect a new team to be making their footprint here in the Cup Series within the next few months, and that is 3F Racing. Now, if that name sounds familiar, that is the team from um, Germany, and they're a complete German-ran team, and they were going to be running the number 30 car, and they were planning to run a few races this year, and then try to make it full-time here in the coming years. Unfortunately, there was a lot of setbacks that they had. Uh, they had a lot of problems getting all their um, mechanics and all their team members on over here to the United States. I guess there was a lot of problems with visas and all that. And also, they it, it does cost a lot to get your own team going, especially with a brand new car like this that not many people really have much knowledge to begin with. But it looks like they've been able to do that, and they are looking to be making a start here near the end of the season. And their primary driver... Uh, as of right now, will be Ryan Vargas. And if that name sounds familiar, he was a full-time driver down in the Xfinity Series for JT Motorsports. He also ran a few races in the Truck Series this year with the number 30 team. He also tried to get CHK Racing onto the um, onto the board uh, by trying to qualify multiple races. Unfortunately, that was just not the case for that team as they've been struggling since day one. But there is an opportunity that he will be making his Cup Series debut later down the road with this number 30 team. There is also opportunities for other Cup Series drivers or x Series drivers who want to move up into the Cup Series to drive the 30 car. Everything is out in the open right now. Nobody knows for sure who's going to be driving what. But the only things that we can confirm is the 30 team is doing everything they can to get a car ready for at least a couple races here at the end of the season. And they're going to have Ryan Vargas as one of the main people as far as the driver spectrum goes. So that will be very interesting. And I'm just happy to see that there could be another um, open charter car that will be running a few races here and there. Always a fan of that. And the last bit of news I want to cover is that there will be potentially still a race this season that will have a full 40-car field, and that will be at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Road Course Race, as we have had an announcement for two more drivers that will be trying to attempt that race, and those two drivers are Shane Van Gisbergen, who is 1-1 one one here in the NASCAR Cup Series, but his fellow rival in the Supercar Series, I'm talking about Brody Kostecki, he will also be making his Cup Series debut here at the Indianapolis Road Course in the number 33 machine of Richard Childress Racing. Big bit of news here to come out for the Richard Childress Racing camp as they now have a third car that they're going to be running from time to time. This is, this is unbelievable. I'm so excited for this. I had a good feeling that Shane Van Gisbergen's win was going to really open up the uh, the doors for a lot of these supercar drivers to really make an attempt here in the NASCAR Cup Series. And it already has. I mean, Shane Van Gisbergen, it looked like it was going to be a one-and-done deal. But after that victory, they're like, oh, yeah, we're, we're bringing you back. And, and there's no reason for them not to bring him back. I mean, this is, this is absolutely huge for... Um, 
<clears throat> track house racing to have him back in the car because he could potentially go two for two by just how well he ran in that race at the Chicago street course. This is also a really flat uh, race course. So who knows? Honestly, this, this could be absolutely crazy, but you're also going to have another car running in here that we have not seen yet this season. That's the number 33 machine of uh, Brody Gostecki. Now this driver has raced against uh, Shane Van Gisbergen this year and has actually beat him from time to time. This is a really talented driver as well. Uh, would, how crazy would it be? I'm not saying this is going to happen, but if it were to happen, how crazy would it be if you saw two open charter cars from two drivers from the Supercar Series duking it out for the victory there near the end? I don't know what NASCAR would think. I, I think NASCAR would just be in just absolute awe. They'd just be like, holy crap, what have we... Uh, just stepped into we have stepped into this crazy new world that Marcus Ambrose was trying to build back in the early 2010s and now it's in full effect here thanks to this next gen car I I'm absolutely excited for this I, I had a feeling this was going to happen but if we're not going to get full fields of open charter teams at least let the charter teams now have a third entry or a fourth entry depending on their size of their team run some races from time to time I like that Front Row Motorsports had a car I like now Richard Childress Racing is bringing a car you also have 2311 with the number 67 car as they're going to have Kamu Koibayashi uh, running in the Indianapolis Road Course Race uh, more than likely I think Jimmy Johnson will run this Indianapolis Road course race don't quote me on that for sure there's been a lot of questions up in the air unfortunately to some some circumstances that have happened with him and his family but this is going to be an absolutely crazy race here at the indianapolis road course uh I'm, I'm not saying that it's good or bad all i'm saying is it's going to be crazy just to hear these big announcements um who knows maybe these drivers will be running up front but if you're a fantasy person like i am you're you're giving shane van gisbergen another opportunity might as well i mean look how well he ran that chicago street course race but you also may have another opportunity now with this driver who's going to be making their cup series debut and that is brody gostecki and that will conclude this week's racing news uh definitely some big news to come out of here this week which is something i always really enjoy you have some silly season 2024 updates and then you also have some updates for some races here near the end of the 2023 season i'm absolutely excited but before we start looking at the future why don't we look at the present right now because yes we do have a race here at pocono raceway which means it's time to figure out who will be our top fantasy picks here for this weekend which drivers do we like which drivers do we don't like which drivers will be top picks and which drivers do you want to stay away from it is now time to dive into our fancy picks here for this weekend at the high point 400 at pocono raceway Alrighty guys, so you guys know how this works. You're going to be having six drivers on your main roster. Five will count towards your final points and you'll have one in the garage area that you can switch out all the way to the end of stage two and not a lap over. So make sure you keep an eye on that throughout the race, but you can only use one driver 10 times throughout the regular season. So you got to be smart on which drivers you use, especially here near the final stretch as there's only just a handful of races to go. And we know that we have some drivers who are running pretty low when it comes to picks. So let's Let's first talk about our top picks. These are drivers that we feel like are not only going to be scoring a lot of fantasy points, but will be contenders for the victory. The first driver I have here is going to be a driver who technically won last year, but unfortunately he lost due to a DQ. I'm not going to say technically won. He didn't win, but he finished in the first position. And that's the number 11 of Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin has always been a driver who's been very stellar when it comes to Pocono Raceway. And his results have not really slowed down at all or slowed down, excuse me, here in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, he may not be the driver going for the victory, but he's been right there in the mix, has had really fast cars. There's just been some mistakes here and there. I don't think he's going to be making those mistakes here at Pocono. And we look at his past few finishes. Let's exclude 2022's finish. He has been able to finish inside the top five in five of the last six races, and he's been able to get a victory in two of them. Leads on average about 10 laps per race. Um, I know that's not many laps, but that just shows you that he is is typically running up front with an average running position of being around the seventh position. Denny Hamlin should be a great option to go with. And even if you only have a couple picks left for him, I think Pocono is going to be one of those races that's going to be near the top for him in these final few. So Denny Hamlin is a great option along with the top representative Chevrolet, the number five of Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson does not have that many tracks left on the schedule that I feel overall comfortable 
with putting him on my fantasy lineup. I, I know Watkins Glen should be a spectacular race for him. I, I don't know about the other road courses. Daytona, I don't trust him at all. Richmond, eh, it's 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 kind of there. I don't know. I'd, I'd rather rely more on Toyotas at Richmond than I would a Chevrolet. But here at Pocono, he's had himself some really, really good finishes here. And there was one race that got away from him. He was his one turn away of getting a victory. But besides that, has always been a stellar driver here at these races. I'm trying to find his last few finishes here as he has been able to finish inside the top 10 in the last four races. Uh, in 2021, he finished second. And in um, the one where he finished ninth, that was the one where he lost the tire. He was able to lead 15 laps. Most recent race for Ann here, he was able to lead 18 with an average running position of ninth. Very good runs all around. It's really hard to keep Kyle Larson off of fantasy lineups right now. And if you only have two picks left, it may be this race and Watkins Glen for that number five machine. That's, that's the way things are looking for me right now. Road courses, I feel like there's some better options to go with. But Kyle Larson should should be one of the top picks here for this weekend. Top representing Ford is going to be the number six of Brad Keselowski after a stellar run uh, last weekend. I think a lot of people were pretty impressed by his New Hampshire run. I think few people thought he was going to be more um, as a contender for the victory, but Martin Trex Jr. absolutely stunk up the show. But here at Pocono Raceway is another great track for the 2012 champion. And even when he's struggling, with RFK equipment, he still has some really good runs here. In the last, uh, let's do seven races, he's been able to finish in the top 11 in all but one of them. And the one he didn't, he finished 14th. His average running position, he's usually right around the top 10, which is about similar to a lot of drivers here on this list. Actually, a little bit better than a few. And to be honest with you, I really don't see him slowing down, especially after the performance he had last weekend. They have a lot of momentum. He's trying to get that victory. He's been on a long drought. Pocono could actually be the race for him. A lot of people were thinking maybe New Hampshire. I'm thinking maybe Pocono. So keep an eye on that number six car as he should be the top representative Ford here for this weekend. Got two more spots as far as top picks go. I'm going to be leaning more towards the most winningest drivers here. And unfortunately, one is not going to be Martin Truex Jr., but I'm talking about the other two, and that is William Byron and Kyle Busch. William Byron and Kyle Busch right now are doing everything they can to get the most points by the end of the season. And one track they've always done pretty decent at has been Pocono. Kyle Busch, uh, most in particular, as he has been able to finish inside the top two in the last three races uh, gosh, I hate this statistic. I, I keep making this mistake because the statistics I grab are before the disqualification. He was the second driver to get disqualified. So technically, he finished 38th, I think, in that race because he got DQ'd as well as his teammate, um, Denny Hamlin. But let's look at 2021. He was able to get the victory in the second race, and he was able to finish second in the first race. Led 30 laps in each of them. And the race last year, he was able to lead 63 laps. Before then, he's had a lot of uh, victories here at this racetrack. This is a really good track for Kyle Busch. And if he's able to get his tying victory with William Byron, it might be here at Pocono. Do not shy away from that number eight car. He is definitely a top pick. And William Byron, with all the momentum in the world right now, uh, minus maybe New Hampshire, but we kind of figured New Hampshire was going to be a race that he was going to struggle at. I feel like here at Pocono, he's going to be able to turn things around. He'll be running inside the top five. Should be a decent competitor. If it's not going to be Kyle Larson running up front, it will be that number 24 machine for the Chevrolet camp. So those are our top picks here for this weekend. It's all top tier drivers. We have the number 11 of Denny Hamlin, the number 5 of Kyle Larson, the number 6 of Brad Keselowski, the number 8 of Kyle Busch, and the number 24 of William Byron. All right, let's fill up the rest of your roster with some pretty good drivers here that should be running around inside the top 10. They may not be running for the victory, but they should be very consistent overall here in this race. In the third or fourth spot on your fantasy roster, you're going to have another Henrik Carr. More than likely, it will be the number nine at Chase Elliott. As Chase Elliott is doing everything he can to get finished near the front, there's a lot of pressure on him as Yes, his finishes have been a little lackluster compared to the last couple of years. Still a very consistent driver, and I feel like at this point, just run him through except for a couple races. Maybe do not include him for Daytona. Do not include him for Richmond. I feel like pe most people have about four picks left for that number nine machine, so might as well throw him on here. I think he's going to be a top 10 driver more than likely. I know the last few finishes have been slightly outside the top 10, but this is a racetrack similar to his teammate, William Byron. He runs a little bit better at, so check Chase Elliott is a pretty good, reliable option here this weekend. And let's go back to the Toyotas. Let's include the number 45 machine. This is Tyler 
Reddick. Tyler Reddick has had himself some really fast cars. It's just whether or not he can execute right now. And there's been some races where he has not been able to execute. But one racetrack he typically does really good at has been here at Pocono, especially the last three races. He's been able to finish 11th or better with his average running position just slightly outside the top 10. That's including strategies. That's including going to the back and making a green flag pit stop. All those stuff, all of those are accounted for when it comes to these types of average running positions. And Tyler Reddick, he's been consistent this year. He's been making improvements, and you know this number 45 team wants to get into victory lane, especially from what happened last year with Kurt Busch. If Tyler Reddick is able to somehow, some way, be able to beat these other drivers, which is going to be really hard to do, that will be absolutely huge for this team. This team would really appreciate that, and I know that 2004 champion. So Tyler Reddick not only has good performances here, but he's running this race for a reason. He wants to get that 45 car in victory lane. Meanwhile, let's look at another newer team uh, that has been running really, really well. That is Track House Racing. I am going to include not Ross Chastain, but Daniel Suarez in the number 99. And the reason why I'm picking Daniel Suarez over Ross Chastain is Ross Chastain has never really had a decent finish here at this racetrack. He really hasn't. I mean, let's look at his last, uh, what is it, like seven races. His best finish has been a 24th place. I I'm sorry. I know a lot of people are just like, hey, he did good last year. I don't trust that. I really don't. I just don't feel too comfortable putting someone in who maybe had a good car in the first half but fell apart there near the end has never had really a good finish beforehand. Daniel Suarez, on the other hand, has had himself some pretty decent runs, especially in equipment where we felt like, eh, maybe not going to be running inside the top 15. He's been able to do that. And the most recent run here, he was able to finish third after the disqualifications, and his average running position was right around inside the top 10. I say if his qualifying time, if he's able to make it into the second round of qualifying, you can bank on Daniel Suarez having himself a good finish, and there could be some times where he stays out to collect some stage points. This is a really big racetrack, so you might have some drivers stay out, and Daniel Suarez might be one of them. Just the way the pit strategies may work out, he may be one of those drivers doing that because he's right there on that cusp. He needs everything he can to get stage points. So he is the gambling driver here of this weekend, but should be a pretty good one because overall he should still be running inside the top 12 throughout this entire race. So that's why I think Daniel Suarez is a pretty good option to have as either your number four or your number five pick for your driver lineups. Two more spots here. Let's include, this one is actually kind of low. I don't know if I really like this one too much or not. Not because I don't think that he's a great option. I just think I may have rated him too low. And that's Martin Trex Jr. I, I think the reason why I rated Martin Trex Jr. so low is because I don't think he's going to be running for the victory. I think he's just going to be a top 10 driver for this weekend. If you want a safe driver, I think Martin Trex Jr. is the best option. And looking at the races going forward, if you only have two races left for him, I think Pocono, Richmond, and if you have an extra one, maybe Watkins Glen. I think those are the only three races right now to rely on Martin Trex Jr. going into the playoffs right now. He's already gotten a lot of victories. He's already shown that he's going to be a fierce competitor in the playoffs. He's just trying to get victories. I don't think he'll be doing it at the road courses. I don't think he'll be doing it at Daytona. But these other racetracks should look really good for Martin Trex Jr. But at this race, I'm only thinking a top 10 run. But still, that would be a great option if you need someone as your number three, number four spot that you feel like needs to be really consistent. And then finally, let's include the 2014 champion, the number four of Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick last year at this racetrack was abysmal. That's definitely worrisome. That is worrisome. And there's been a few races where we feel like he could be doing good, that he just kind of fell apart. I have a feeling, though, that based on what we saw last race, now I know New Hampshire has been favorable for Stuart Haas Racing. I feel like there could be some minor steps in the right direction for that number four team. Again, I don't think he's going to be running for the victory, but based on past results, he has been able to finish 10th or better in most of the races. This last year was just not a good run for him. I'd say with Kevin Harvick, watch his practice and qualifying just like you would with other gamble drivers, and that should be your determination on how well he's going to run because let's look at where he usually qualifies. If he qualifies on average about 15th or better, should be a pretty good race. Anywhere outside the top 20, if he's not in the top 20, don't even look at him. I think that's the best option to look at for the number four car. Still, he's going to be right there in that mix for the number five pick, I think, if everything looks good throughout this weekend going into Sunday's race. I, I If it, we see anything close to what we saw in New Hampshire, it's going to be a fun weekend for Stuart Haas Racing in that number four camp. So those are the drivers in the pretty good category. We have the number nine of Chase Elliott, the number 45 of Tyler Reddick, the number 99 of Daniel Suarez, the number 19 of Martin Trex Jr., 
and the number four of Kevin Harvick. And for our final spots here, it's time to look at the gamble category. These are some drivers that we don't usually use all 10 of their picks throughout the regular season, but they could be some viable sleeper options here for this weekend. Now, you're going to notice that most of these drivers here on this list are going to be drivers right around the top 16 trying to make it in by points because I really think they're going to do something similar to Daniel Suarez and they're going to be trying to stay out during those uh, green flag cycles and trying to see if they can get some stage points, which will be very viable. I mean, if they finish, let's say, 16th, but they're able to score 10 um, stage points overall, like maybe they finish 5th and 1 and 5th and the other just to make things, or 6th and 1 and 6th and the other just to make things super easy for me, that would be able to put them in a spot where someone who finishes in the top 10 with no stage points uh, would get less points than them. That, that's how important these stage points can really be. So, it these drivers could be some very interesting options to go with here this weekend. And let's first start off, I think the best one to first start off with is the driver we just talked about earlier, and that is the number 34 of Michael McDowell. Michael McDowell has been doing some very impressive things in that car, has been able to get himself into the top 16 in points right now. Last year, he was able to finish 6th after the disqualifications and have himself a pretty decent run. I think Michael McDowell is going to be one of those drivers taking some gambles here and there, but overall, we'll be running pretty well in this race as a whole as they seem to have found something here in the summer stretch. This summer stretch could be really, really good for Michael McDowell. We already know his talent when it comes to road courses. We know his talent when it comes to super speedways. If he's able to finish inside the top 10 here, it's going to be really hard to keep that 34 car out of the top 16 in points. So Michael McDowell, definitely a great driver to take a gamble on. Another driver to take a gamble on, you got to include the number 23 of Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace has been making himself some improvements at certain racetracks, and this has been one of his better racetracks. As in the last three races, He's been able to finish 14th or better with his average running position always being around the 12th position. As we've seen with the other people who were like top picks and mid-tier picks, their average running position was about 10th or 11th. So one position off, still, that is some really good odds for this number 23 car to get himself a potential top 10 finish. And he needs it right now because he's right there in that mix. Uh, Bubba Wallace here in this Toyota camp have been looking really good at certain racetracks. And right now we're looking at our top picks. We got a couple of Toyotas here. So Bubba Wallace could be right Right there in that mix along with his teammate Tyler Reddick and Denny Hamlin and Martin Trex Jr. I don't want to shy away from Bubba Wallace. He could have himself an excellent weekend in that number 23 car. Three more spots left. Let's include now um, a driver who has kind of fallen off just a little bit, just a tiny bit. But is still showing some speed here and there. And that's the rookie, the number 54, Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs down in the Xfinity Series used to have himself some stellar runs here as he was able to get himself a couple of second place finishes here in 2022 and 2021. Some good solid runs. And he's been making steps in the right direction here in this number 54 car. He was struggling a little bit in the springtime, but he's still maintaining his composure for the most part. He's still making some rookie mistakes here and there. If he's able to execute all the way to the end, Ty Gibbs may be a great option here. Again, uh, the Toyotas, uh, they tend to work well all together. If one of them's running well, you're typically going to see about three more right there in that mix. Unless it's a road course race. I don't know. Road courses are all over the place right now this year for the Toyotas. At least it's better to be all over the place rather than in the back. But at other racetracks, they've been pretty consistent. After seeing his great performance that we've seen the last couple of weeks um, at the beginning halves of those races, he definitely has speed. It's just whether or not he can execute. That's something you're going to have to take into consideration on if you want to rely on the number 54 car. Two spots left. Let's see who we're going to give him to. I, I let's let's include AJ Allmendinger. I think AJ Allmendinger is actually a good driver to go with, just based on his results in the Xfinity series. This racetrack is kind of similar to, um, in a way when it comes to multiple grooves, kind of like a road course. Not exactly. I think Martinsville is more of a better comparison for road courses, but still, this track is a little, very unique. And we know that AJ likes very unique racetracks. Has been getting himself some pretty consistent results. I think this is maybe the weaker out of these gamble picks. So I would definitely keep an eye on qualifying and practice for this particular pick. Because it's not a guarantee that he'll be um, a sleeper pick. It, it could be a complete miss for them. So really keep an eye on this weekend's results before the Sunday race. Because AJ Allmendinger, he's a big gamble. And for the last spot... I am going to include a driver who ran really well at New Hampshire until he lost the tire, the number 10 of Eric Amarola. This race will probably be a big determination on whether or not Eric Amarola wants to continue the 2024 season, uh, or continue for the 2024 season. 
And the reason why that's the case is I think a lot of people banked on him to run really well at New Hampshire. He did, but he didn't get the finish that backed it up. I, I think here at Pocono, he's had some good finishes in the past, and he wants to do everything he can to finish near the front. He's had some top 15 finishes, and 2020 was his best showing with a fifth and third place finish. Of course, that was a time when Stuart Haas Racing was at an elite level. But there has been also some si uh, times excuse me, where he's had an average running position of 10th at the end of 2021, the second race. And then in 2022, he was able to finish 13th. So he's been running around in that mix. But he is also a big gamble as well because he, 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 this season has been a rough season for him. There's no doubt about that. It's just whether or not he can just really break away from that bad luck. That will be the big determination on whether or not Eric Amarola runs well in this race. I feel a little bit more comfortable relying on him rather than a driver like A.J. Allmendinger. But still, that doesn't mean he's going to be there at the finish. It will be a very, very interesting pick to go with. I think for Eric Amarola, you're going to have drivers that you feel comfortable can make it to the finish if you're going to have the number 10 car in there. You don't want too many um, gambling picks because... He, he could potentially let you down, and if you have another driver let you down, then you're in big trouble when it comes to your overall points. So we shall see, but either way, I still think he's worth a gamble, and those were our five drivers here in the gamble category. We have the number 23 of Bubba Wallace, the number 34 of Michael McDowell, the number 54 of Ty Gibbs, the number 16 of AJ Allmendinger, and then the number 10 of Eric Amarola. <laughs> And let's close it out with our featured matchups here for Fantasy League this weekend. Remember, you got four featured matchups. If you get these correctly, you could score 10 points each. This will be the determination on whether or not you can win Fantasy League or finish in the middle. Now, recently I've been struggling with these, but last week I actually did pretty good. So let's see if I'm able to repeat that success here this weekend. The chances are uh, not likely, but you know what? I'm going to try my best. So the first matchup we have here is the number four of Kevin Harvick going up against the number 23 of Bubba Wallace. I think for this one, you're definitely going to have to look at practice and qualifying. If we look at past results right now, Bubba Wallace has the slight edge just by most recent runs. If you're looking throughout a history, Kevin Harvick's the better option, but that is been with a strong Stuart Haas racing. So as of right now, shockingly, I will go for Bubba Wallace over Kevin Harvick, but I am going to keep an eye on practice and qualifying, so that is one to definitely look at on Saturday night before the race begins. Second matchup here, we got Ross Chastain going up against Christopher Bell. I think Christopher Bell is a better option just for the simple fact that Ross Chastain has not been able to give himself a decent finish here at Pocono. I'd rather go for a driver who's had a lot of speed and unfortunately has just missed out on a few finishes here and there, rather than a driver who's never had a good finish at a racetrack to begin with. So Christopher Bell is a driver I'm leaning towards over Ross Chastain. Fourth matchup here, we got Alex Bowman going up against Daniel Suarez. Alex Bowman has not been able to get a top 10 in the last 10 races. He has fallen off a cliff. So I think the best option is to go with Daniel Suarez. Now, I know Daniel Suarez will probably be focusing more on stage points than the overall finish. It, he's still going to try to get himself a decent finish. Don't don't um, take that out of context. But there might be a chance. It, if I were him, I'd rather score about... 16 stage points and finish 15th rather than score two stage points and finish 10th. So it will be very interesting right there. The question is whether or not where Alex Bowman is going to finish. Um, I think Alex Bowman will be right around the 15th position here in this race, but I'm going to lean towards more Daniel Suarez. I think Daniel Suarez has some momentum unlike Alex Bowman. And for the last matchup here, we got Ryan Blaney over Brad Keselowski, or going up against Brad Keselowski. That wasn't a foreshadow for what I was going to say, because I'm going to go for Brad Keselowski here. I think he's going to be the top representative forward. Uh, Ryan Blaney's had some good finishes here in the past, but they've been few and far between. Brad Keselowski has been a lot more consistent. And even in the most recent races, Brad Keselowski has looked really good. So I'm going to lead towards more of that number six machine. So those are my four picks here for the featured matchups. As of right now, I got Bubba Wallace over Kevin Harvick. Might change if practice and qualifying says something different. I have Christopher Bell over Ross Chastain. Daniel Suarez over Alex Bowman. And then I have Brad Keselowski over the number 12 of Ryan Blaney. And ladies and gentlemen, that was our fancy picks here for the High Point 400 at Pocono.
bring us to the end of the show, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Should be a pretty interesting weekend for all three races here at Pocono Raceway. Remember the Truck Series and Xfinity Series. Both those races will be on Saturday as the Truck Series race will start uh, pretty early for the most part as it will be at 12 p.m. Eastern on Saturday and will be on Fox Sports 1. Meanwhile, the Xfinity Series race, I will pull that up here in a second, but it will be right on after the Truck Series race, and that will be at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, and that will be held on the USA Net- Network, as well as the Cup Series race. However, the Cup Series race will be a Sunday race, and that one will be ran at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure to tune into those races. These races could have uh, big indications to- towards the points, especially between the 15th through the 20th positions for the Cup Series. So definitely want to keep an eye on this race and who knows maybe it will actually be an exciting race usually Pocono is not known for exciting racing but we could see it here this weekend if you want to follow me on social media you can do so on Instagram TikTok, YouTube, and Twitter. Just look up Vanilla Wafers. I will pop up. Instagram is starting to get a lot of traction, almost at 250 followers. <laughs> Big growth here in the last couple uh, in the last couple of days. So thank you guys so much for that. Uh, if you want to follow me on TikTok, that's at 10,000 followers. Unbelievable numbers over there. And that's at Vanilla Wafers 44. And then YouTube, so so close to 5,000 subscribers. These numbers are unbelievable. Even the 250 on Instagram is unbelievable to me, guys. Thank you so much for listening and enjoying my content. I I really do appreciate it. Everything has its own little spin to it. And I think that's why people have really enjoyed some of those channels um, differently. Like TikTok has its trivia. Instagram has uh, has really appreciated some of the um, uh, card openings as well as also the trivia as well. And then YouTube has really enjoyed the longer narrative videos I make. It's all NASCAR related, guys. You just got to look up Vanilla Wafers and I will pop up on those. Or if you would just want to talk to me during race day, Twitter is the best uh, way to reach me at. That's at Vanilla Wafer 44 as I usually just post random shenanigans on there during the race day coverage but that will wrap up today's episode guys i have been your host vanilla wafers and i've been able to take you to the front of the field so why don't we grab that checkered flag do some burnouts and head on out so you all take care this has been the fantasy filler podcast